Hi, my name is Kendall, and today I'm going to show you how to build this for your Sea Perch ROV. You may ask, well, what is this? Well, let me show you. This is a water sampling device for your Sea Perch. It can be lowered to any depth or location, and when you push the trigger, it captures a sample of water. How cool is that? This sample is then brought back to the surface where it can be analyzed and tested for things like pH level, salinity, microorganisms, and many other awesome things. Alright, I want to show you real quickly how this thing works. We have a hollow tube with two rubber plugs on the end that's connected to a pin. The pin is really part of a solenoid valve you take from your sprinkler system. And what happens is when you hook up the solenoid to a power source, the ends collapse in. Voila! So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this very quickly. In this how-to video, we're going to break it into three sections. First, how to make the pipe and the mounting bracket. Second, how to make the end caps that seal it. And third, how to make the electronics. But before we be begin, we want to make sure that you have all the tools and materials necessary to get started. Shown here is a list of all the tools that you will need. Make sure that you have all of them. Here is a list of materials that you will need. Some of these you will have from building a sea perch, others you will have to get specifically for this project. The first step in making your tube and bracket assembly is to measure 8 inches on your tube and cut it with a hacksaw. The next step in our process is to make the bracket that will hold the solenoid valve onto the tube like this. Here is a drawing that shows you the dimensions and also some of the basic steps. But I will go ahead and show you in person some of the things to do. You'll begin with a piece of aluminum tubing that is three quarters of an inch tall and doesn't really matter how wide it is. You'll want to cut the length to about an inch and a half. After you've done that, you're going to go ahead and cut, drill a three quarters of an inch hole right here through the top surface and then tap it with 20 threads per inch or whatever will match your solenoid valve. So your hole will look something like that. And then flip it directly over in which you will drill this little hole, eighth of an inch. This is the hole which the pin should point through. After you're done, if you want to, you can go ahead and cut off one of the ends of this tubing so it has another open face. But that is not required. Then you'll want to get a piece of aluminum that you can attach to the bottom through gluing or welding that will sit on the tube and which can then have zip ties put over the top of it to hold it in place. Now don't forget to go back to the drawing and look at that and that will tell you all the rest that you need to know to make this piece. Next is to make the rubber end seals. There are three parts to this section. First, make the rubber ends. Second, put the hooks in and the third make the loops that will attach to the solenoid pin. Here is a schematic of what one of the end caps will look like. You'll want to refer back to this schematic during the next couple of steps. To make the rubber ends, what you'll want to do is to take these dimensions that you see on the screen and draw them and cut them out on a piece of paper. Then take the paper, put it on the rubber, and trace out on the rubber, followed by cutting the rubber with a pair of scissors. After you have cut out the rubber, you will want to roll the rubber up into a cone shape and glue it together. The glue, if you're using hot glue, will probably not hold strong enough, and you will also want to use duct tape. After making the rubber cones, you will want to make hooks to go in the ends. You will want to take about six inches of baling wire and make a loop in the middle so that it doesn't fall through the cone. Then insert it into the cone and make hooks on either side making the hook on the outside very short and the hook on the inside towards the edge, like this. Once you're done making the hooks, you will want to completely seal off the end so that no water can leak through by using hot glue and electrical tape. Make sure you repeat this twice to make the two end caps. Once you've made your two end caps with hooks in the end, you will then want to make little loops to go in the end. Use your thinner wire and make two loops on each end and attach it to the hook in the inside. Then take a pair of pliers and pinch your hook closed so that it doesn't fall off, like so. 
When you have attached your two loops to the end, you're ready to put rubber bands on one side and pinch that hook closed. We are now ready to work on the third section, the electrical parts of this instrument. This diagram should show you everything you need to know how to run the electrical wire for your sampling device. It may seem like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple. You just take some time to pause it and study it. You will see there's a solenoid in the bottom right corner. Connect your solenoid cables to two of the cables in your Cat5 cable. This connection needs to be waterproofed, so the first thing you'll do is solder the wires together, second, hot glue it, and before the hot glue dries, wrap it in electrical tape. On the other end of the cable, where it connects to the control box, take that same colored of wire and connect one of those wires <coughs> to the switch. Then take the other wire and connect it to one of the terminals of the battery. Then take a piece of wire or an alligator clip and connect the, from the other terminal of the battery to the other terminal of the switch. The final step in finishing off the electronic portion is to take the pin out of your solenoid and to drill a little hole into the the face of it and to put a paper clip in with some hot glue. Now that we have all of our different pieces of our instrument made, it is time to put it together. This is pretty simple. You first want to take your solenoid and put it into the hole of the bracket. Like this. The pin should be sticking out of the end. What you'll want to do is then push the pin in as far as it goes, hold it, and then trip off any extra. That way, when the pin retracts, it goes all the way in and not just part of the way. Next is you're going to want to put your end caps in. This can be a little tricky, but if you take any type of string with a hook on it and hook it on to your rubber band, and then take that string and thread it through so that one end is in, and then pull the string through until the rubber band show through. Then, with your end cap with the hook on it, go through and hook it. You may want to take your pliers and pinch them. And then you have it together. Now it is time to mount the sampling device onto the sea perch. I recommend mounting it onto the back using zip ties. Congratulations! You have just finished building a water sampling device for your ROV. Now, to finish it off, we want to make sure that it works. There's two things we need to test. We need to first test that the solenoid valve moves up and down, and second, to see if our water sampling device leaks. So let me show you how you can test each of these. To test to make sure that your solenoid works, what you'll want to do is to set everything up, like you see here, and then go ahead, hook it up to the battery, and push the trigger. A simple test you can do, just to make sure that your end seals are sealing, is to bring to the faucet, Fill it up with water and see if you're leaking. I'm leaking on that side, but not that side. So I got some work to do.